All right, everyone, welcome back once again to this Beefcast presentation. Game three in this best of three series. Who's going to be moving on? Joining me, Muatorin. Brandon, what's your prediction? Hmm, I want to say Thorzane, just because this map is better for Terran, I feel. Uh, just an easy third expansion, and then uh, being a macro Terran like Thorzane, you can pretty much move on from there into any kind of game you want. But you know what? Loli has shown that he's quite good as well, so I definitely wouldn't be surprised if he took this this match. Yeah, I could definitely agree with you there. Let's get right on into it in the bottom left-hand corner, dropping game number two to a little bit of uh, aggression from his Terran opponent there. Not quite able to establish his third base. Will he be able to do it here on the bottom left-hand corner of Entombed Valley for FXO, the Red Zerg, Loli? Yep, and against him, just like the first two games, uh, it's spawning in the top right corner of Ian Tomb Valley, the Blue Terran, E.G. Thorzain Red Call, or Lady Call. Lady Call. Street Fighter guy says. <laughs> just, just Lady Call. Lady, Lady Call. Call. Lady Call. <laughs> Lady oh, Call. Oh, man. It's, it's fun to make fun of accents, right? I agree, yeah, especially when they're trying so hard. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so it is worth noting that uh, here we do have cross-spawn positions. Very much so an advantage for Lowly. You don't want to be spawned close positions with your opponent here on Entombed Valley. This is going to be a lot easier to defend drops from this position. And most importantly, the push distance is going to be substantially longer for something like those Siege Tank pushes. So more time for the reactionary player here, Lowly, to go ahead and react to his opponent's aggression. Yeah, and there will be some aggression here. Double two racks started by Thorzane down at the uh, at the ramp at the bottom, not the his main ramp. So definitely wanting to put on a little bit of pressure. I expect that once he realizes his opponent's in cross position, he'll you know he might push out with his marines and do a little bit of pressure. But for the most part, he's just going to look towards expanding and not any kind of all in. Sadly, I don't think we'll see the revitalization of bit by bit prime. I, I think that we might, and if we do, we have to scream bit by bit. I agree. We're going to do it. So we'll we see are. if uh, SCVs do make their way across the map right now. We do have well, two making their way out right now to possibly put yeah, down bunker some here. bunker pressure. And yeah, that's what you got to do when you got the uh, the two racks down here. The hatchery going to be making its way to uh, completion here. And drones, a lot of drones, 10 drones right now have been pulled, leaving only five to six drones mining for the time being. And this is a good reaction from Lowly. He wants to make sure that there are no bunkers coming down. And we do see two more drones coming at, or excuse me, two more SCVs bringing the SCV total to five. And if he drops a bunker right there, beautiful positioning. Do it? Yeah. Oh, MVP, I hate you Oh, so this, is, this is going to be yeah. this is pretty brutal. brutal right there. That bunker positioning two more is... Marines on the way. Yeah, a bunker positioning is fantastic. That one Marine down there is going to be completely safe. Now, we do have the uh, linebackers, excuse me, the linemen going to be blocking for the Marine quarterbacks right here. And this is a ton of lings and drones forcing their way out here right now. The SCV is being surrounded, uh, but a little bit of a misplay there. But the lings actually are probably going to be able to clean up all these yeah, SCVs and so. Marines, and they're going to push the Terran back across well. the map. Actually, with this uh, two extra Marines that walked up, maybe not. Oh! I think... Is it going to happen? No. I thought oh. he was going to bit by bit for a second, but the spine crawler is now in position oh. to kill this Marine, so this rush is over. I am kind of glad we didn't have to scream bit by bit, because I probably have, like, a neighbor or something that's sleeping. <laughs> Even though this is, like, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, there's probably yeah, somebody fine. sleeping. No problem. No problem. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed. I have not been able to cast a bit by bit. Or even watch. I guess I wasn't really casting them. Hey, he just made his uh, his return though. He hasn't returned yet. But... What? Well, he's back to being a pro gamer. It was announced like three weeks ago that Bit by Bit's back. Just let me go kill myself quick. Yeah, dude. It's Are you gonna serious? Be yeah, I'm not even You're kidding. trolling right now, right? He was at GSTL last week and he didn't play. Oh no. Oh, this can't happen again. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be so I, good. So I was. Good. I was under the understanding that, that he was just, like, in college, and he's like, hey, you know what, Terran Cheese is the best thing ever, I'm going to see how far I can get, and he became a semi-pro gamer, because he just didn't have to try. Is that not the case anymore? I don't know, man, but he's oh, back. Man. I'll get yeah. you I'll get you the article. Do that. I, I want to cry. It's going to be good. So, uh, <laughs> back at home, we did have uh, 
a couple of Zerglings making their way into the Terran Mineral line here, where a total of six SCVs have been killed now. That does include the SCVs that were part of that bunker rush. But uh, losing six SCVs, that's uh, a pretty substantial amount. However, the Zerg had to make a ton of Zerglings right here. If we take a look at the units lost, uh, 500 units lost for our Zerg player and 625 for our Terran. So Terran a little bit behind in that respect. Lowly might just die right now. Yeah. There are, what is this, 13 Marines? That is a ton of Marines. zero Zerglings on the map. There's two Queens and a spine crawler, and some drones. So if, if Thorzen goes in right now, I think he might actually break this. No, if drones get nope. pulled off, he'll be able to mm -hmm. block enough with those Queens and that spine crawler. He's going to need um, more units to deal with that. If but he had, nice spine crawler if going he had pulled those SCVs, he would have got it. <laughs> yes, if he bit by bitted right there, he could have killed him. Well, that's not really a bit by bit anymore because bit by bit is only ever allowed to make like 13 SCVs. Yeah, that's true. And Thorzen's <laughs> already gone up to like four command centers, three command yeah, centers. So it's not allowed. Definitely not in the spirit of bit by bit. Kind of sad. Oh, well. You know, anyway, uh, Stim here has been started by the Terran. Uh, two more racks just finished in the main. And now, I suppose, he's got three orbitals. Oh, almost three orbitals. The second orbital, orbital in the main is about halfway done, so he's going to have triple mule soon, which will give him a pretty good economy. And, you know, looking at the worker count, he is behind, but it's at a point where Lowly does not have a third, and he will have third as uh, third command center OCV production. So he'll catch up. <laughs> yeah. In the last two games, we did see reactor Hellions being the uh, map control force. This time we do see the group of 16 Marines are actually going to be the map controlling force. Here and they're able to clean up all the Zerglings and the drone that were making their way over to the third base here. And even maybe going to kill, yeah, to kill one creep tumor there. So going to be able to halt the creep spread a little bit right there. But these Marines are going to be very crucial at denying this third base. Once again, all three games, Thorazane has been able to deny the third base for quite a long time to a Zerg opponent. Yeah, that's a huge deal, man. And again, we see Infestation pit off two base, which isn't very common in this matchup. Uh, Lily, you know, like we talked about, he is very comfortable staying on two base, but I think he might be too comfortable. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Because you just need a third. Yeah, that's how you, it is. You need to get that eco up. And he's sitting on that layer tech. He's got the Baneling Nest down. He's got double upgrades working. The Infestation pit on the way. He's not going to die to any aggression right now. But he needs that third base up. He's pushed the Marines back out across the map now. So he needs to get that third down ASAP. And the drone making its way over right now. But Thorazane's actually beat his opponent by, to a third base by about two yeah. full minutes here. Well, I, Thorazane is mining at his third right now. Well, not much, but he's doing it a little bit. And uh, Lowly's third just went down. This is huge, man. Terran is ahead in supply. The worker count is 53 to 45, so still ahead for Zerg. But it doesn't matter because he's not got a third base. Any more drones right now are just wasted larva. These links, he might as well be making them, and that's like the best economic choice right now. It's kind of kind of crazy. Yeah, at this point, I, I almost would say that Lowly kind of needs to go. I don't know. If I was in this yeah, situation, I I'd be wanting to go all in. I'd be hey. saying, hey, I'm going to go ahead and make, like, four infestors and a ton of speed banelings and just try to kill you. But I yeah, don't know. Yeah, it could work if you were doing that. There's no tanks out right now. It's just 27 marines, so infester baneling is pretty much the absolute hard counter to mass marine. It yeah. Could work. I don't know. There's also a wall going off here at the third, and a missile turret is part of it. That's different. Yep, wants to make sure that he's not going to get any kind of burrowed infestors in there. And Lonely right now, just continuing those upgrades. Going to be starting plus two ground armor here. We'll see if he adds attack in there relatively soon. And Thorzane going to be continuing his upgrades as well. 2-2 two, two with tank production. Going to be starting very soon here as Siege Tank Research is on the way. And Medivac's even being incorporated into the composition. So Thorzane playing completely standard right now. Just going to get those Marines, the tanks, the upgrades, and the Medivacs all together. While Lowly is barely just starting to get those gases down at his third. And just starting to get drones over there. Yeah, this is the second time in this series we've seen a situation where Terran is mining gas at his third before the Zerg. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Zerg has started those gases there, so he's going to get that gas economy up. I assume he'll be taking this fourth quite soon, and he's just made a whole bunch of drones. So his economy is to a point 
like where it should be almost. But it just got there so late, man. He's only one supply behind. You know, Terran is already at 65 SCVs, so pretty much even economy with Triple Mule. But Terran also has an army that is pretty good, yeah. given that there's only one Infestor out. No, oh, there's six now. Thorsen making a little bit of a push across the map here, wants to clean up some of the creep, and even a uh, medevac with eight marines has been loaded up, but it's flown by two overlords, and it's even going to be spotted by a third overlord here, so it's just going to hang out in the abyss for the time being, but uh, in the middle of the map, we do have Zerg and some banglings trying to make a little bit of a push onto the marines and that solitary tank that's camped over there, although I guess he's got a buddy now there as well. So holding down that Zelnunga watchtower, keeping the creep spread to a minimum, and uh, Zerg really doesn't have an answer to that for the time being. So Thorzane's going to be able to have good map control there with a good pre-spread amount of Marines. And going to be able to safely go ahead and tech back up at home. Even going to be starting his own 4th Command Center and continuing his production. Yeah, and that little engagement there could have gone Lily's way if he'd engaged. Um, if he committed, he probably would have broke that when there was only the one tank. It's just yeah. something to say. Like he, he doesn't have any scouting as to what the composition is. For all he knows, there's 10 tanks back there. Well, not 10, but, you know, four or five tanks already sieged up. When in actual, you know, in, or reality, there was only one siege and another one just got there, so... So I like, hurts. I like what Lola's done here. He's taking some of these Zerglings and he's going to be able Ooh. to try to counterattack, but more importantly, he's going to be able to segment off the reinforcements. Yeah. But the Marine's doing a good job of baiting those Zerglings back into the tanks. And so when Loli finally does decide to engage here, he's going to want to come in from at least two sides, preferably three sides. And so he's got those uh, flanking Zerglings there already to begin with. But Marine's going to be continuing to try to get this around onto these Zerglings, and the Zerglings are actually getting a little bit whittled down by some of these units, but they're going to be able to connect with about nine Marines over here, but in the middle of the map, Zerglings and Banelings and Infestors, oh my, crashing and meeting with their opponents as every one of these tanks is going to fall, and the middle base being, or well, the middle Zelnaga Tower being retaken momentarily by Zerg, but the Infestors forced to retreat as Marine reinforcements do come back in, and uh, Zerglings trying to clean up the rest of the Marines here, but there's simply too many Marines in medevac stim marines pretty good unit yeah i think what just happened there you know why uh Loli was able to clean up most of those tanks is generally on you know in tomb valley you take the middle as the turn that's like your mid game plan you want to get tanks and marines and medevac siege at the middle of the map you want to take that and then you want to deny bases it's pretty much what thorzan's been doing here the difference, however, is that he's so low on tanks because he started production late, he couldn't hold the middle, and now he's just going to lose all these marines to Infestor Ling. Really not that efficiently. Well, actually, well, they, yeah. <laughs> this is all the Ling, so better than I thought it would go. There were uh, a few in tanks that were below medevacs that I think Loli might not have seen. Oh, um, yeah, I didn't see those either. Yeah, and so he was able to actually get a pretty good uh, composition engaged right there. And so, Greater Spire back at home, finally being started. Hive's been done for about two full minutes right now, so this is a late Greater Spire. And Zerkling's going to be trying to get in there and clean up the rest of these tanks and Marines, but once again, units filtering all the way across the map right here, and the fort base is continually under siege by the Terran. Those Marines do stim up once again as one full energy infester does come out, and he's going to drop a few of these fungals, but fails the chain fungal right there, and does in fact lose that infester without killing all those Marines. Yeah, it's kind of funny what Thorzain did here. You know, I was talking about his mid-game plan, take the middle, and then push out to the bases. He pretty much just said, screw the bases, I'm going right for your, <laughs> right for your fourth. Or, screw the middle, I'm going right for your fourth. And it worked out really well for him. He's now denied it. And we're kind of in a similar situation as what we've been in pretty much every game. Thorzain's been denying bases really well, and he's just gotten a well-positioned army here with, you know, lower siege tanks this time. But, you know, he's up to five now, and it's low marine count now. Yeah, yeah, and uh, a lot of burrowed Zerglings here in the middle of the map. I don't know if Thorazine did happen to see those. So those are Zerglings and not Banelings. But burrowed Infestor is actually going to do a good job of cleaning up the tank line outside of Loli's Fourth. But that was a lot of energy expended there on those Infestors, and he doesn't have a whole lot of Zerglings to complement the Infestors to try to eliminate the rest of this expeditionary force. Yeah, there are 12 Zerglings on the way, but that's really not very many. He just went up to 26, and this Fourth did die, so that lacks production did he just kill that base yeah the base yeah, did die it was not canceled um lowly's not starving for minerals right now he is however starving 
for larva. Only two larva on the field as I check that right there. So he's not able to reproduce all the Zerglings that he does want. But with the Broodlords coming up right now and the very wise decision to drop that Ultralisk Cavern, uh, he could be in a pretty good position to go ahead and push this bat finally. But there's another deep Siege Tank line. There's four Siege Tanks, five Siege Tanks. Uh, in this composition right here. And the slow push up here is going to be continually making its encroachment onto the Zerg player. Yeah, I feel like a huge white dragon is just going to fly out of nowhere because this is like the never ending story of aggression here from from Thorzan. <laughs> it's ridiculous. He's just not stopping. I don't yeah. understand. Where does he get the money for this? <laughs> or the production? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Thorsain doing a brilliant job of macroing behind this, continually adding barracks as the economy does get stronger and stronger, completely done with upgrades right now, incorporating uh, marauders and even some ghosts into his composition while keeping his investor, or excuse me, his viking count relatively high to deal with everything that could be coming his way. Uh, but I kind of feel like if Loli made one composition really hard and stuck to it, that Thorsain's jack of all trades, master of none composition, could be kind of fooled, but right now we do see the units moving in. A lot of Zerglings taking some fire from both angles, but the Siege Tank's going to be cleaned up right here. The Infestor's on the ground, dropping some Infested Terrans, going to be dropping some Fungals onto the Medivacs here, and looks like they're going to be able to clean up all the units on the ground and in the air, and Lowly still has a gigantic bank with which he's going to make a hard Ultralist transition, possibly. That's at least what I would think that he's going to make with all that money. Yeah, seven Ultralisks on the way there and so right now continually moving out but a little bit of overextension possibly right now as the ghosts do snipe out quite a few of these infestors yeah he did snipe uh two infestors there so not really all that many and i think he lost all his ghosts he lost yeah he's lost all his ghosts now to fungals so i don't know if that was the best trade as far as casters goes but there's still more ghosts on the way and you know, Thorzen has managed to hold on to this position for so long. He's also up to, what is this, 74 SCVs, so I guess that's where he's getting all his money. Uh, and he's just, his production has been so good that his money, it's not banking at all. He doesn't have any bank, and it's because his macro is just perfect. I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> Yeah, so confusing. It, it's very important to note here that the players have lost roughly equal resources, very, very minimal um, disparity there, but Thorazin has continually had the better economy. If we go ahead and take a look at the mineral income here, we have Thorazin at 3,000 mineral income versus 1,200 of his opponent. Almost, almost three times as much mineral income as his opponent. So Thor is saying, very happy to go ahead and trade out these units, but as these uh, oh. Ultras do make their way in here, does Thor Zane have the correct composition of tanks? Does he have the Marauders that he needs? And it looks like he might. There's a pretty good spread coming in right now as the Bio does come in to start to flank, and a lot of these Ultras have been cleaned up, but the Ultras continuing to make their way in. A huge EMP goes down onto these Infestors. A lot of the Infestors completely depleted in energy, more cloaked, Ghosts going to be making their way in, but uh, a nice job of going ahead and fungling some of these ghosts. But f using fungals on one ghost, that's not what you want to do. You need to save those fungals for marines and marauders. Otherwise, these ultras are going to be so exposed. Lowly continuing to max out here on uh, Zerglings behind this as they're going to be making their way over to the fifth base, which was cleaned up by a little bit of a marauder run by. Wants to be able to defend his own fourth. But he's on top of the production for Thorzane right here. And Terran not able to get out an army fast enough to deal with these Ultras. Lowly now up 50 supply above his opponent. Yeah, dude, this is, this is crazy. I did not expect this to happen. I think what happened, or what ended up happening is Thorzane, Thorzane overextended too many times. And he lost his army too many times. And Lowly had a huge-ass bank. And he was like, I can make lots of Ultralists with this huge-ass bank. And you're not prepared for it. And, yeah. uh, you know, like you said, having those Vikings just didn't help. So not only overextending and losing units, but he also had units that he just didn't want. Yeah, and it looks like Thorzane going to be dropping in this game. Which once again, just like game one, it, the entire game, it felt like Loli was losing. And then all of a sudden just comes back. It's yeah. crazy. That one tech switch comes out and wins Loli the game. Thorzane forced to GG out. Loli takes the series 2-1. Yeah, I, I don't pretend to know a lot about Zerg or Terran, and this game baffles me. It, it just, it looks so much 
like Thor's engine win, and then Loli randomly makes a bunch of units and wins. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I. That was a hell of a game. Hell of a game. Indeed. Nice job by Loli making the proper decisions to get that tech transition at the right time, punish his opponent, continually uh, echoing behind it, and he was just able to hold out, punishing. Thorazine for his greed, having too many SCVs, maybe, I, I don't I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm not even going to pretend know. anymore to know what's going on. <laughs> Thorazine dropping into the lower bracket, though. We are done with this series. I'm going to go play some volleyball. Brandon's probably going to go do something awesome. We're done for the day. I think <sighs> I might watch Aladdin. Dude, Aladdin's awesome. Okay, Wait, okay. <laughs> I've been your casting host of Beef. Check me out over at youtube.com slash beefpotpie one and Twitter at beefpotpie one. Brandon, plug yourself and let's get out of here. Well, you can find me on the YouTubes at youtube.com slash muatarn. It's M U A T A R A N. And you can find me on Twitter at muatarn, same spelling. Sounds good. All right, we're out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back with more WCS replays uh, sometime in the next few days. Check it out here on YouTube or on Twitch. 